Customer complained huge vibration at the idle. Here you can witness it like worn engine mount bear the engine. Hi, my name is Ravi. Today I am working on Suzuki Maruti Alto K10 Indian made car. As you are seeing here, customer complained this car has no issue except huge vibration at the idle. First and foremost, I am going to scan the car and search for codes. Actually this car has a simple EFI system with the AMT gearbox and it is electrical throttle controlled system. Ok, read four codes in the ECM. Here we get P2001 LIN lost communication with generator. It's a current fault. Interesting, seems to be this car alternator controlled by the LIN messages. Anyway, is it possible to bring a vibration at the idle by a communication problem with the alternator? We have to do some tests to determine it. However, various reasons could cause to idle vibrations. So I am going to have a direction through the scan data on this car. Before that I would like to show you something which I noticed on the instrument cluster. Do you see that missing charging indication lamp on the dashboard? It should be lit right below the check engine lamp at the key on position. It is missing, definitely this light should be lit up. Maybe a blown bulb itself on the cluster could be the reason. Ok, leave it and pull some live scan data to see that battery is charging and generator control commands are going on. Hope you can heard the vibration throughout. Ok, I am going to load some data related to the charging system. Here I select generator regulator voltage, battery voltage and generator field duty with some other. Ok, start the car and see the data. Here you can see battery voltage went up to 14 volts around that indicate alternator is doing his job. Next generator regulator voltage which indicate COM in the within brackets shows 14 volt. That means alternator is doing his job and talking to the ECM and send the data to inform the voltage at the regulator. Interesting, but here the generator field duty is 100% which is not normal at the idle. What it means, fully loaded or anything else? I have to do some more tests for determine what is going on. First I hook up the scope to see the LIN bus communication signal. Today I am using PicoScope 2204A 2 channel oscilloscope. Because as it support for communication bus decoding, I would be able to decode LIN bus messages on this diagnosing. I will show you how to do that and does it really important for the diagnosis. Before that I will show you the wiring diagram of the charging system of this specific car. Ok, here it is the charging system wiring diagram. This white and red wire is the alternator controller LIN bus. It is a single wire serial communication bus. The other wire is the alternator B post to battery for charging. It is clear and simple. The serial bus send and receive data that control the alternator and inform the alternator outputs to the engine control module. So I am going to hook up a piercing probe on this white and red wire to see the LIN bus activity. Ok, here I pulled out the connector socket from the alternator. Somebody has been here and missed the wiring connection on this socket. No problem, let's see what happened. Anyway, I would like to see the LIN bus activity here while bus is off. Therefore, I disconnected the bus line connector from the alternator. Because then we could observe that what will do the alternator when the bus off and no communication situation. Ok, then key on first and scan for the codes again while bus is off. I need to check will it set a new fault code. Yes, it has been set another code. U0073 control module communication bus off. That means ECM and alternator talk to each other. That is why it was set new bus off fault code. Ok, leave it and let's go to see the LIN bus waveform. Here you can see square type of signal which represent the LIN bus communication messages. Seems to be even the bus off ECM is sending messages to the alternator. Anyway, don't be misled as this square wave type of signals are the pulse width modulation signals to control the generator field duty. Obviously, these are the LIN bus communication signal. Ok, let's decode these LIN bus messages using the PicoScope software. PicoScope has this great feature that decode any kind of bus that we are using in the automotive field such as K-line bus, LIN bus or CAN bus. Even though we decode this bus using the PicoScope, we will be never able to read or understand those messages. Because of those messages are decoded 
into a binary or hexadecimal pattern. Therefore, we will understand nothing as automotive diagnosticians. Only thing we can see that those messages are in a valid format. Here you can see hexadecimal values in a colored label trace under the Linbus communication signal. Remember that Linbus communication signal always stay around the battery voltage and pull down to the ground as a square wave for represent the data bit when it is transferring data. If we go back to the case study that we are doing while before, this Lin communication system bring the messages from ECM to the generator to control the generator field duty and bring back data from generator to the engine control module. We should have an idea about how this communication system works on this specific case study. Actually charging system controller circuit on the ECM is sending the generator field duty control percentage as a Lin bus message to the alternator. Then data transceiver on the alternator integrated circuit receive those messages and translate them and grab the duty cycle command to control the generator field. And then generator send back the message to ECM that include regulated charging voltage information. Single wire communication bus doing multiple job accurately and more faster. Even though Linbus is a 10 kbps slow speed, it is more than enough to this kind of non-safety critical operations. Okay, let's connect the bus line back into the generator and start the engine and we'll see what is going on the Linbus communication signal. Because as we have a Linbus communication fault code, we need to verify that the bus is communicating properly even after we connect the bus into the generator. Okay, bus is on now. Here we have the signal. Key is on but signal has been pulled down to the ground. What's going on? Shorted generator integrated circuit pulled the signal into ground or anything else. Okay, let's go and start the car and we'll see what will happen. Engine was started but badly shaking and hissing. Extraordinary vibration. Sometimes can't keep it in idle and engine stall. Hope you can hear that vibration and bad hissing. Anyway, bus is online now. It's sending messages. That means no any interruption for communication between PCM and the generator. But I really don't know what messages they are exchanged. But I can see data packets are throwing. Okay, I am going to change the time division and grab more data into a one page. And then analyze its decoded data to see what's going on this Linbus communication. Here is the saved waveform file. There are some activities going on. But not sure how many messages are there. But appearance seems to be just two data packets are repeating. Anyway, let's zoom in those packets. Here we are. This message is very narrow. It has an ID but seems to be no data there. Here is an another message. It look like healthy and it's supposed to be. Ok, let's go to the decoded data page. Look at this, protected identifier field has only two IDs repeated continuously, E9 and 61. My assumption is right, this specific Linbus transferring just two messages. If we go to the data field here, only the E9 identifier has data and it has been checked by classic checksum field which indicate as valid message. But 61 identifier has no data and checksum failed. Really this is where that picoscope bus decoding feature comes smart. So in this case study my analyze summary is Linbus communication is fine and they are sending and receiving data back and forth. But on this communication system has only one valid message. Therefore my assumption is ECM charging controller circuit is not communicating and not sending generator field control duty to control the generator. But the generator send its output data to ECM that is why we get regulated voltage amount in the scan data. 
So I believe that is the only one message we are seeing here in this Linbus communication waveform. Same times I have another witness to prove my assumption of the ECM charging controller system is not functioning. Do you remember that we have no charging indication lamp on the dash? I opened the dashboard and take out the controller board and did some inspection. Sorry for that I was unable to capture some video footages on it. But I realized that charging indication lamp was lit when I did a diode test using a multimeter on that LED lamp. That means lamp is fine itself. Here is the instrument cluster wiring diagram of this specific car. Look at this. There is no specific dedicated wire to find for charging indication lamp. That means it works through a CAN bus message sent from the ECM. Here you can see the CAN bus line from ECM. But that charging indication lamp light up command should be requested by the charging controller circuit in the ECM via CAN bus message. I am so confident with this analysis that charging system controller in the ECM not functioning anymore to communicate with the instrument cluster or the generator. Battery voltage is around 14 volt, field duty is 100%, hope you remember that even the controller bus is off, it shows 100% duty. That means charging controller system in the ECM not control the alternator, I believe it is not sending controlling messages to the alternator. Then alternator goes into default charging settings like 100% duty. Then alternator produce the field with his maximum strength. But idle RPM of this 3 cylinder car is not capable to bear that additional alternator load. So I am confident enough to call on bad ECM. This car need a ECM or repairing the charging system controller circuit on the ECM. This car brought to me by a used car sale. Nobody diagnosed this bad idle vibration. However, I am going to inform my diagnosis result to them and further repairing works depend on their decision. We'll let you know further updates if I get. Anyway, thank you for watching, stay subscribed with us for more diagnostic videos.